Hi everyone, I'm Rob from Project Sandbox, a University of Lethbridge library initiative. In this video, we're going to look at our Raspberry Pi kits. In the kit, you will find a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus with a sense hat, um, the case, and a 16 gigabyte uh, micro SD memory card on the back right here. Two meter HDMI cable, a DVI to HDMI um, adapter, and a power cable with an on off switch extension. So if this is um, taken off, you can just click it back on there. Just remember that if you're taking out one of our Raspberry Pi kits, that you have a monitor with a HDMI or DVI input, as well as a mouse and a keyboard. Both um, have to be wired or have a dongle. So to set up all these components, like I said, you need to have your own monitor. Um, with this monitor, I've already attached the DVI HDMI adapter. You don't need to go through that whole process with me. Just make sure you're putting it in the correct port. So once that's connected, you grab your Raspberry Pi. Um, you got your power cable. You have your HDMI. Um, so why don't we connect all those first? So we got our power connected with the on off switch. We'll connect the HDMI. Make sure it goes in the correct way. And then you want to connect a wired keyboard or a keyboard or dongled and a wired mouse or mouse with a dongle. Okay, so <laughs> whenever it's finally set up, you just press the on switch. Boop. You'll see the lights on this comes on, the light here comes on, and you'll see the monitor has a nice rainbow screen for you to look at. So now that the Raspberry Pi is started, why don't I show you some of the things you can do with it? Um, the first thing you'll want to do um, is you'll want to connect to the internet. So to do that, it's just like anything else where you click on the Wi-Fi um, and you would choose whichever network, sign on to it like you normally would. So we're on guest at U of L right now because that's where we are, obviously. First of all, I, I do want to also apologize to you if anything is jittery on the screen. Um, I'm using the Raspberry Pi to screen capture everything. Um, so it's not the most reliable thing. Anyway, let's look at a couple of the things you can do outside of that. Um, so first of all, the Raspberry Pi runs something called um, Raspbian, which is like Windows or um, iOS. Um, it's the operating system that it uses and it's Linux based. So if you know Linux based stuff, you're pretty much golden with this. Um, so why don't we look at a couple things? Um, the first thing I wanna show you is that you can use something called Python on here. Python is how you can do all the coding for the sense hat, the, the little nice LED matrix thing that I showed you. Um, if you're not sure about everything a sense hat does, you can actually Google it. Um, what we'll go into though is sense hat emulator. So when it opens up, you'll notice that we have the uh, Raspberry Pi image right there. Um, and you can control a couple things with it. Um, this is just the emulator though. You're not actually connecting to the Raspberry Pi. If you would like to connect to the Raspberry Pi, um, we can look at an example. So say we want it to do that rainbow pattern that we saw when it started up. If you go into those little areas that I just showed, you can um, click on the thing and it's gonna open up a Python script with everything that will make a rainbow pattern. Um, the one thing you'll need to do though to connect it to the sense hat is where it says this sense underscore emu, kind of like the bird. Um, you change it to the sense underscore hat. And when you hit file save, you can click run and run module. And then what this will do is it'll tell it to go to the Raspberry Pi sense hat and it'll start running it. Um, I'll let you experiment with this to see what actually happens because it is quite gratifying. At least I find it gratifying. Um, next, I'm going to show you the terminal. So this is where you go into um, to actually affect some of the functionality of the Raspberry Pi itself. 
um, this is a pretty powerful thing to actually go into. Um, so the terminal uses um, something called bash to do all the functions that you would actually want it to do. Um, so we're going to put ls, and this brings up a list of all the directories that we have. Um, if you would like to change a directory, you can just go to write cd, and uh, be mindful this is case sensitive. It's not that intelligent. It can't figure out what you're doing unless you're doing case uh, the way it should be. Um, so this would take us into our desktop, just by going cd desktop. Um, so you can play around with that. This is a way to um, explore what's within all of your different areas, stuff like that. Um, yeah, just play around with it and you'll get a hang of it. Or you can go to one of our workshops and talk to Bryson, who knows way more than me about some of this stuff. Um, he's a very nice fellow. He's very helpful. Um, okay, anyway. Uh, to go up a directory, so say we want to go back to just the Raspberry Pi, you just hit dot dot. Oh, sorry. You go cd dot dot. Then it goes up a directory. Um, if, say, you're running something and it's not opening, you can hit control C um, and that'll cancel whichever function you want to do. Let's see if I can do it before it does this. Oh, no, can't do it. Anyway, say you have this line, giant script running um, and you want it to stop, just hit control plus C um, and it'll stop doing that. Um, if you want to clear all the screen because you don't like all this random junk anymore, you can just right clear and hit enter. It'll clear it off. Um, and then the final thing I'll show you that you can do with the terminal, you can do so much more than this though. I want to reiterate that is just if you write sudo, raspi dash config just like that Oop, not just like that just like that and hit enter this will take you into the functionality of the raspberry pi where you can change things like um the password the uh, network options how it boots so like what it boots from um if you want to overclock it you actually anytime i've tried to overclock this it doesn't allow me to so if you can get it to do it awesome um, interfacing options. This is where you can really mess up the Raspberry Pi. And if you want to, I encourage you to do that. Um, if you do mess it up though, please just let us know so that we can re-image it and everything will be good to go again for the next person. Um, I don't want to change anything though, so I'm just going to get out of that. Um, so I showed you how to use Python just a little bit with the sense hat. You'll need to explore it more if you want to know more. Um, how to do the terminal a little bit. Um, the last thing I'll show you is just uh, some of the applications that you can use on there. So to find all the applications, you just hit on the Raspberry Pi logo um, and you can just kind of scroll through. So if you notice, there's no um, like name brand software. It's all um, open source software is generally what you'll find on here. So you can do things like Audacity, VLC Media Player, um, uh, GIMP, Inkscape, uh, whatever. Um, instead of Microsoft Office, you have LibreOffice stuff. Um, I'd encourage you just to look through things and play with it a little bit. Because the Raspberry Pi, like the whole point of it is that you can do anything to it digitally. Physically, please don't break it. But digitally, if say, you want to see what it'll take to totally um, take out the Raspberry Pi system digitally. Uh, feel free to do that. If you want to go into the terminal and you are kind of unsure about what some of the things you're writing will do, that's okay. Try it out. That's the whole point of these things. Anything that you might have been scared to do to your Windows computer, totally feel free to do that to this Raspberry Pi. So that's what I have for you. Thank you very much for watching. And remember that although we went over different aspects of our Raspberry Pis, that is far from everything that you can do with them. Um, just remember to be creative and try stuff out. Um, once again, thank you very much for watching and please subscribe to our library channel if you're interested in keeping up to date with videos coming out of our library, whether those be Project Sandbox or library proper videos. 
Um, and if you would like to continue watching videos, you can click on one of the videos on the screen right now and continue your Project Sandbox journey. Um, thank you very much, and I hope to see you soon.